So you want to replace your deck. Here are some questions you should be asking yourself before you start to dig. Namely, what kind of piers are you going to use or footers? Maybe there's an existing one like this. Um, maybe you're ready to dig your own, but some questions you need to consider are how high up do you want that to come out of the ground? If it's going to come up higher, especially when it's near a hill or creek, then you're going to want to sink rebar in it. Second, how many piers per square footage of your deck are you going to use? So this is a 12 by 12. Um, just using two 8 inch footers is not going to be enough. It's basically going to be like a pencil and those are going to slowly push the way into the ground. Inch by inch, year by year, but still. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in some 12 inch piers that's going to really bear the weight of this. These 8 inchers are going to carry the corner posts um, and that'll come up straight through the uh, corner and have a strong handrail that way. The problem. I tried. This was the pier for this deck. And uh, that's just not going to cut it. It's not deep enough. It's not cylindrical enough. And the frost heave has caused this deck to sink. So we're going to tear this out and replace it. For perspective, 48 inches. This is the footer that was holding up the deck before. Um, you can see they dug a hole, it gradually got more pointed. So that does two things. One, it allows frost to uh, attach to the side and kind of heave it up and down. Um, and then two, it's also creating more or less a triangle which is driving down into the ground. If anything, you want it to be mushroomed at the, the end. This is upside down, right? So. Um, you don't want the mushroom to be here at the surface. You want the mushroom to be at the, the base in the bottom of your hole. So we dug that out. We're going to replace it, put in a 12-inch uh, cylinder, and make it awesome so it lasts a lifetime. Allow me for a moment to mansplain what exactly frost heave is. So here is your ground, and when you dig a hole, Typically, when you dig a hole, it looks something like this. This is the shape that, of the pier that we pulled out. It was about 12 inches deep. And um, frost, you know, so the ground is, is wet and there's, um, as that um, water in the ground freezes, it expands about 9%, um, which exerts 50,000 pounds per square inch PSI um, on the surroundings. So as the ground freezes, depending on you know where you live and such, this is now susceptible to being moved up or down or whatever. So what you need to do is dig a hole below the frost line, check your local area for the Cincinnati area, it's about 32 inches. So you need to dig to below that so for me it's 32 inches so I went down to 33 inches and even then a little bit more and at the base um, so you put this cardboard tube here and that prevents any dirt or contaminants from mixing with your concrete um, which would weaken it um, and at the bottom I poured a little bit wider so I have a little bit of a mushroom here um, and that's below frost line, so the frost isn't going to mess with this. Now the frost doesn't have a chance to latch onto the sides here because it's smooth. So as the frost expands and contracts, it just goes right beside this post instead of heaving this up and down. And my post, of course, comes out of the ground as well, so that water isn't going to set on my 4x4 uh, four four post here. So the water will just run down, go away, leave it um, perfectly fine. That is what frost heave is. The way I determined to make these holes in line was to measure 10 feet exactly away from the wall and run a string there. And then I put a little mark at two feet in from either of the edges. So these two holes are now 10 feet apart. And uh, that is where we were digging the holes. I wanted to go down below frost line, which in the Cincinnati area is 32 inches. so. I used a piece of rebar stretched across and I could tell, okay, that was about 33 inches. And then we're ready to set the hole and start pouring. So stuff. now we have uh, put in one of those tubes. We leveled it 
we put some cement down on the very bottom and then we added the tube and then we filled it about halfway and put rebar in and uh, each time we um, jab down in there and make sure that all the um, air pockets and so forth are, are filled in. We're going to take another bag or two to fill this up and level it off at the top. So here's what we have now. Um, this is a filled and finished more or less. This is getting a little watery on top but uh, most of it has fallen down there. That's all filled. This one is now kind of officially um, almost halfway done. So we put the rebar in there and uh, make sure it was straight and we're ready to go with the rest of it. You're going to be sure to agitate the cement as you go to get out any air pockets and also to mix up whatever um, bags of consistency there might be. That way you don't end up with a cold seam. You can do it with your arm if you want. Um, most people use a shovel or, or a pole. Okay, he's stuck. <laughs> oh. He didn't just agitate cement there. He agitated Daniel. As the concrete begins to cure, uh, or maybe I should say settle, the, the weight of the concrete that's pushing down pushes out any excess water that might be in your mixture and forces it out the top. Here you can see it's forming a couple little holes, um, like almost little like cave-like springs that are springing out of this thing. Pretty cool, pretty crazy, and um, that's to make sure. So there you go, that is how I took care of these footers. For this particular situation, you know, you see the hill, there's a creek down there. Um, so I had to take in a lot of considerations with these particular footers. Still a lot of work ahead with this deck. We still have to actually put all of the joists into this frame, put all of the uh, slat boards across, the deck boards across, do the railing and a staircase. Man, I have seen so many different opinions on what kind of concrete to use and how much to use and do you use rebar and do you use gravel at the bottom and all this stuff pretty much anybody's opinion is the right one. I'm just showing you how I did it. I'm not saying it's the right way. I'm just saying this is what I did. But if you are a professional and you know what you're doing and you want to chime in to the community here to say, here's the right way to do it. Don't do it this way. Love to see your comments down below. In the meantime, hit subscribe and turn on your notifications for more updates from Spirit of a Handyman. He's got the spirit of a handyman. Oh, hey.